Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to my channel Aptitude Club. Uh, today here we are yet again to discuss another LRDI set from CAT 2022 paper. Now in this LRDI expert series, every video I am discussing one LRDI set uh, from the previous year questions. And in each video we are trying to understand the thought process of how to bring in a structure when we are approaching uh, any LRDI uh, set and how you should uh, like systematically interpret the information then uh, jot it down maybe create a table uh, create a format uh, to understand the data and then analyze the questions properly so if you have missed the previous videos i will suggest all of you to watch the previous uh, sessions in the lrd expert series i'll pin the playlist in the i section do check it out and let's start with today's video so this question was uh, from cat 2022 slot 2 okay this is a slot 2 LRDA set and uh, kind of easy. Okay, if you compare it with uh, the other three sets that have been asked, this is relatively easier. Let's see what has been given. So basically, there are two plots. I will show you the plots. So the two plots uh, they show the data for four companies, uh, code named A, B, C, and D. So there are four companies, and the data is given for three years: 2019, 20, and 21. Now the first plot shows the revenues and costs incurred by the companies and uh, the second plot shows the number of employees employed by the company as well as the number of new employees hired so basically there are two plots and uh, both the plots they describe two different things let's take a look at the first plot kya bol rahe? so this is the first graph okay kind of like a scattered plot is ko, uh, bol sakte hai. so the first plot, uh, plot uh, shows the revenues and cost so x-axis indicates the revenue means the sales overall sales and cost uh, y-axis may cost dikha hai. so to understand for an example if i am taking this d d the revenue is 20 crores whereas the cost of d is 45 crores 20 cr is the revenue cost is 45 crores Similarly, for B, I can say the revenue is like 50 CR, whereas the cost is like 40 CR. I hope uh, the uh, like graph makes sense to all of you. So, similarly, for all points, suppose for this point A in 2019, the revenue is 90 crores and the cost cost is uh, 85. I can take. All right. So this is more or less the first plot very easy to understand and of course uh, because the values are not written for uh, future references we need to decode all these values just like I wrote for D in 2020, A in 2019 and D in 2019. So better if we write it all for all the uh, for, like points mentioned in the graph. Now just to give you some context we can interpret the graph in this way. Now this is a 45 degree line okay so this line indicates x is equal to y or in this case revenue is equal to cost so it is desirable to stay in this area because as a company you will want the revenue to be more than your cost so this is desirable the area above the graph is undesirable because here the revenue is lesser than the cost so the company will be at a loss you incur more cost and the revenue is less if you are going for any point above this line any point below this line this area is desirable and the more you are towards the right for example point c point b these are very highly profitable i can clearly see uh, points lying below uh, like uh, lower towards x-axis on the right side of this line are more profitable points almost close to the line almost close to the line means less profit the closer the points are to the line the profit will be lesser if exactly on the line then in this case profit is zero if they lie exactly on the line then profit is zero here the profit is zero in this case also profit is zero because revenue is equal to cost revenue is equal to cost so profit is zero a in 2019 and B in 2019 if I compare so B will have more profit as compared to A so the more away from uh, the line on the right side you will be more profitable another way to think about it so maybe uh, if the question doesn't need us to exactly find out the data 
we can interpret the graph in this way okay hope this makes sense to all of you but still uh, for your reference what i have done is i have decoded all these numbers and uh, we can present it in the table in this manner so company a b c and d revenue cost and profit for each of the years 2019 2020 and 2021 for an example to explain a so if i take a in 2019 the revenue is 90 and the cost is around 85 here we wrote revenue 90 cost 85 so the profit is revenue minus cost profit is revenue minus cost so i did that for each of the years like this for each of the companies a b c d we calculated the revenue cost and profit for each of the years 2019 2020 and 2021 and then I have computed the total profit, which is the sum of the profits. For example, for A, it is 5 plus 25 plus 30. So the total profit here is 60 in case of company A in these three years. This part shouldn't be a, a problem uh, for any of you. Sida sida graph se hum inference draw karke likh hai. Very simple. Okay, you can avoid doing this table as well. You can directly draw it from the graph. But if you draw the table again better. Let's come to the second graph. Now the second plot shows the number of employees employed by the company at the start of each year, as well as the number of new employees hired by the company. For example, company B had 250 employees at the start of 2021. So B in 2021, if you see, there are 250 employees. And how many employees joined? 30 employees. So this is 30 and this is 250. So company B at the beginning of 2021 had 250 employees and that year 30 employees joined the company. This uh, gives, an, uh, gives us an interesting uh, data. If you look at this, suppose my journey is from 2019 to 2020 to 2021. If you look at this graph, pick any company. Let us say we are going with uh, B. So B in 2020, B in 2019 and then B in 2021. So see in B in 2019 you had a certain number of employees around let's say 205, 210, let's say 210 and then uh, around 35 employees joined. To so join this, this line will be 35. So B had around uh, 210 employees, 35 employees joined. But this number is around 240, this is 210, this is 240, and then this is 250. Now, if this number is 240 and around 45 employees joined, how come the total number of employees next year is 200, uh, like 250? Look at this. In 2020, the number of employees was around 240, but in 2021, it is 250, whereas in 2020, 45 employees have joined the company. So my total employees should have been 285. How come it is 250? That means also every year some employees are leaving the company. So that is what we need to calculate. That is not given, but that is in a way hidden in the data. So we'll have to calculate how many employees are leaving the company every year. So to do that, let's see a table like this. 2019, 2020 and 2021. Four companies A, B, C, D. Let us say I'll pick with A. A in the beginning of 2019 had 150 employees and how many employees joined 20 employees so 150 employees were there and 20 employees new joined so ideally the number of employees should be 170 but if you look at A in 2020 it has reduced so this was 150 but here it is 140 so it is even lesser than what they were in 2019 although 19 men new employees have joined the company. So 150, 120 becomes 140. That means 30 employees must have left because now the strength of the company is 170. And because next year start hai 140 say, that means 30 employees must have left the company. Now 2020 you start with 140. And at 140, how many employees are joining? If you look at this, 35. So 140 plus 35, 175 should be the strength of the total employees next year. But if you look at A in 2021, it is again 150. 
So 175, 150, 25 employees have left the company. And in 2021, 25 employees joined. But how many left the company that we don't know. So that is why NA means not available. This data is not available to us because to calculate this we would need 2022 data which is not provided. So that is why I wrote NA in this case. So we can follow the same process for the rest of the companies B, C and D and you can write uh, or fill up this table in similar manner for company B. Let us say for B in 2019, so B in 2019 is 210 and 35, so 210 and 35. B in 2020 becomes 240 and 45 people join. So 235 is 245. But next year you start from 240, that means 5 people have left. 240 plus 45 is 285. But next year you start with B2021 is 250. That means 35 people have left and so on. We'll just continue this process for C and D as well. Very simple. Okay, this question is very simple and the easiest out of all the four sets. Based on the understanding of these two graphs, okay, these are the two graphs. First graph talks about cost and revenue. And uh, this is the table for that. The second graph talks about employee, new employees joined, how many employees left the company and the total strength of employees per year. Based on that, let us get into the questions. First question, considering all three years, which company had the highest annual profit? This we have already calculated. If I consider all three years, highest annual profit is company C. Highest. So I can go with company C. This is 85 profit just for each year revenue minus cost revenue minus cost revenue minus. you can also interpret this from the graph as well because see you look at this at the extreme right we have C here okay D at this point is uh, at loss so definitely D cannot be the company so it could be C or B but C uh, makes a more than uh, like or if you see it's very low here the so cost is at the lowest and revenue is at the highest so a, a great deal of difference is created here but either ways we have computed this table for total profit and clearly C is the winner followed by B and then A so very easy question this one question number one question number two if you look at which of the four companies experienced the highest annual loss in any of these years highest annual loss so loss, if you look at, only one company had loss. Okay. Highest annual loss, only one company, that is company D. Rest, and none of the other companies, they incurred a loss. Only one company had incurred a loss. So this answer is obvious. Highest annual loss, so it has to be company D. Then the third uh, is, the ratio of a company's annual profit, annual profit, To its annual cost. So this will be a measure of the performance. Okay, annual profit to annual cost. Which of the four companies had the lowest value in 2019? So if I take company A, B, C and D, I will have to take profit by cost in 2019. So let's go back to the table. Profit by cost in 2019. Profit by cost. So 5 by 85, 25 by 75. This is 5 by 85. This is 25 by 75. Then 5 by 20 and 10 by 40. 5 by 20 and 10 by 40. So this is like 1 by 17. So 0 0.058. This is 1 by 3. So 0.33. This is 1 by 4.25. This is again 1 by 4.25. So the lowest obviously is company A. Performance wise. This is company A. Profit upon cost. Company A. Very again direct easy question. 
Now the total number of employees lost in 2019 and 2020 was the least for. So if I look at number of employees uh, who left the company, so for company A, how many did exit? Uh, 30 and 25, 55 people left in 2019. Here it is 50, and then here it is 85. 45 plus 40, 85. 20 plus 35 is 50. So the least is for company B, highest is for company C. The question is saying the employees lost is the least for company B. Least number of employees who took an exit in 2019-20. We have already created the table. So that is why if you create those two tables, any question will be extremely simple for you. And this was relatively an easy set. Okay, not a lot of reasoning involved. Just clear decoding from the data. Let's take a look at this. Profit per employee is the ratio of a company's profit to its employee strength. Okay. The profit per employee, we calculate it in this way. This company's profit to its employee strength. For this purpose, the employee strength in a year is the average of the employee strength at the beginning of that year and the beginning of the next year. So in 2020, so the year under concern is 2020. So let me uh, write down these two things, profit and then employee strength. How do you calculate employee strength? Now you take the average of what? Employee strength at the beginning of that year and the beginning of the next year. That means for 2020, employee strength will be the average of employees in 2021 and 2020. The average So which of the four companies have had the highest profit per employee? So if I calculate it for four companies, what is the profit of A and then employee strength of A and so on we'll do this. If we go back to this data, in 2020 profit of A was 25. 25, 50, 10 and minus 30. So D is out of question. 25, 50, 10 and minus 30. So D to out of question. Eh? A, B and C we need to calculate employee strength. So employee strength will 2020 and 2021 ka average. So for A it is 140 and 150 average is 145. Here it is 245. 325 and 400. So 145, 245, 325 and 400. So this is anyways out of question. So the ratio here it is 25 by 145. Here this is 50 by 245. And here this is 10 by 320. Obviously this is not the highest. 25 by 145 is approximately 1 by 6 caspers array and this is around 1 by 5 caspers so B seems to be the highest. highest. Very easy questions and this was a must solve set in slot 2. I hope all of you got an idea how to deal with this simple questions and just decode these two graphs create these two tables and the life is simple. Okay, Every question related to this you can answer very easily. So this completes the slot to analysis uh, from video 5 till 8. 5, 6, 7, 8 are the four sets of slot 2. 1, 2, 3, 4 were the four sets of uh, like uh, four sets of slot 1. So slot 3 I'll be taking up in the upcoming videos. Hope all of you like the explanation of these uh, sets and uh, if you are new to my channel do explore the other videos that I have done so far. You will definitely find them useful on your CAD preparation journey. Uh, we'll meet again very soon on yet another uh, video. If you have watched it this far, do subscribe to the Aptitude Club channel and share it with your friends also. And uh, stay tuned for the next upcoming video. Till then, keep solving, keep studying. Thanks for watching the video. Bye-bye.